Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, I'm so um, blessed to be here today. And first of all, I thank God for this opportunity. And also, I thank Pastor Taylor that uh, asked me to give a sermon to this week. So I said, okay, I will try. You know. So, yeah, every, thanks God for everything. So before I go forward, I would like to pray. Please bow our heads. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for Holy Sabbath today. We ask you there to send the Holy Spirit down to our hearts and especially send the Holy Spirit to my heart so that every word that I speak will be come through you and uh, bless each one of us here today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. My title, sermon title today, is Jesus Set Me Free. And um, I would like to share about a little story So, uh, one day, you know, a little boy that uh, walking through the cemetery, cemetery, and uh, he reading the tombstones. So we can see in the picture about the uh, the uh, writing on the tombstones. You know, he came across. One of the tombstones named Paul Adams, it was written like this. So, shortly, we'll be in the screen, you know. Stop, my friend, as you go by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, you soon shall be, so prepare yourself to follow me. So the little boy read the tombstone and he thought about himself for a moment. And he pulled out a crayon on his pocket and uh, he wrote his response. He wrote this, to follow you, I am not content until I know just where you went. Yeah. Right. I grew up in a Buddhist family. The one that I just wrote, uh, I just read. I know for if I were Buddhist, I might feel scared because I didn't know if I die where I'm going. And uh, as you know. As a child, I grew up and I asked my dad, you know, I sometimes wonder if I die where I'm going. I asked my father. My father used to be a monk for many years before he was get married to my mother. So he knows about Buddhist teachings and their beliefs, you know. And I know a little bit, but not as much as he knows. So as teenager, I asked my father, oh, dad, where are we going to be after we die? So what he said to he, his answer to me is, well, you will reincarnate incarnate to another form of life. It could be human life or animal life. It's depending on karma and how you live your life in that lifetime. Well, I was kind of not satisfied the answer. You know, you will reincarnate back into animal life. So now I'm this, now I'm human. I will be in animal life. So I, well, 
you know, my dad told me like that, so I, I just keep in my mind just that way, you know. And also Buddha had teach that if you practice like me, you will be like me. Buddha also taught us, you cannot, nobody can help you, can save you. Your own self will save you, can only save you. So even Buddha cannot save you. So why people, you know, we are worship, God that we worship cannot save us. So today I have started worrying about myself. Uh, I don't want to reincarnate to animal life. <laughs> I, it's always stuck in my mind. And uh, I have to do good, you know, to be able to save my life from or hell or to animal reincarnation. So what, as a child, uh, I try to do good things. So only our own work will save us from the bad thing like hell, uh, animal reincarnation. So when I was 10, my parents sent me to a Buddhist temple. So monet, or another word called is mo monastery, something like that. Get to start uh, kind of like my mission about saving my own self from hell and from bad reincarnation. So I had a, when I went to the Buddhist temple, I have to read uh, a lot of books about Buddhism, you know. So I, every day, then they ask me to meditate, to, to meditation every day. But as a child, uh, I, I feel like I'm not free, like I got to do this for next re good reincarnation. Well, this is so very burden, heavy burden to me. So when they, they told you, you when you meditate, uh, you will have a clear mind and you have everything. For, for me as a child, you know, uh, as a little monk, we watch movies sometimes. Sometimes we play like a kids because we are kids, teenager. So when I meditate, oh, only thing like movie pop out in my mind and a uh, soccer game pop out in my mind. Well, that's a sin too, right? So I'm sin. So who gonna forgive me this time? I cannot forgive myself. But, <clears throat> but, you know, just keep going as a monk like that. So now I started doubt about that I'm not gonna reincarnate to human life because I couldn't even do anything good. So I was full this I was full with dissatisfied about that I have learned. I spent time two years in Buddhist temple and one day I got a call from my parents to come back to where do where did they, uh, where they live in refugee camp for uh, uh, register for refugee members to update a new members you know refugee member so I ask uh, permission to the head monk we call it abbot you know there's the head of the monk so I said I'm going back to my parents for two weeks and he gave me permission to go so I got to into the camp into uh, in and in the camp and in t and waited for two weeks but they said in two weeks they're gonna take a you know a photo or registration but they didn't do it in two weeks so I have to I had to keep waiting keep waiting and then um, until they start so but when I at that time my I told the head of the monk that I will go back in two weeks, but the time is already passed. So what should I do now, you know? And uh, when I went back, I'm not normal with this clothes. I, I was as a monk, wearing like a monk. And when you are a monk, you are different to other people. You cannot go and play with people. You have to be like a, kind of like a monk. People uh, honor you, sometimes they worship you too. Oh, so I have to be in a home all the time and uh, not going out. Without going out, it's like a prison to me. So you are a monk and you want to do something like other people, you cannot do it. They forbid you to do that, you know. 
So uh, later on, I said to my mom, oh, I cannot keep waiting just the way I am, I was, I am like this. I need to, you know, change my appearance. Like I need to change back my life to like a people, like common people. So now, uh, now, and then I just quit the monk life and become like a other people, you know. And uh, and uh, while I'm waiting, and the school in the camp is about to start too. And uh, what I now, what's the plan? Is my parents told me, okay, since you are waiting, so why don't you just go and uh, be in the school, one of the school, you know? so that it will not waste your time. So I agree with them, and my parents told me, gave me advice. If you go to enroll school, I, we encourage you to go and in, enroll in one of the Seventh-day Adventist uh, middle school in the, on, or, you know, in the camp, because they have a few uh, a few quantity of students, so you can more focus on the lesson or study. And um, also, my parent said me one thing: if you go to that school, remember, just focus on your study, not to their religious, because their religion is just to uh, attract you to their member, they just want to make their more members. So don't, don't, you know, don't focus on that. So I, uh, I went to Seventh Day Adventist School, and I heard uh, every morning before they started classes, stu uh, teachers gather all students in one place and uh, they taught about God, and we sing, and uh, they <coughs> say a story about the Bible stories. So I was there, and my first time to hear about God, and I, I couldn't understand, first of all, because I was grew up in B Buddhism family, and I, and I just, First year, I didn't get anything at the school about religion. But second year, but they keep saying like, God loves us. Jesus died for you. Yeah. And I keep hearing that a year over a year, day after day. And I was thinking my, in myself, well, what is Buddha? And Jesus is a different, you know. I never know, but so I become interested in Jesus. The Buddha said, told me, "You save to save yourself." But in Jesus, uh, believe in Him, so you, he, he can save you. Yeah. Now I started getting doubt about this too, so I keep. Uh, as the time goes by, I keep and uh, go to the school, and I keep running. I mean, learning the the Bible in the school, and now they taught me how to pray. Sometimes in the class, when I I was never pray pray, I don't even know how to pray. But one day the teacher told me, "Okay, Saint Win, please pray for us before we start." Wow. I look around and I couldn't even say any word because I don't know how to pray. But the teacher told me just do it as you whatever you can. So I started pray like what just you know when you first start to pray you know you don't know that much. But when you the when I started like that a little next day it get better and better then uh, you know, later I could, I can play pray in my own language. So it was very kind of a challenge for me now because I am very interesting in the Christian world, uh, Christian uh, belief. 
So I went home and I asked my mom, I like to be, become a Christian. And my mom said, no, if you, are become, if you become a Christian, then don't come back home. Yeah, because we are warrior generations. Our great-grandfathers, great-grandparents are Buddhism. So if you do that, it means you break the, our heritage or our, you know, the generation rules. So I was like 15, so I was listening to my parents because if I can't come back home, well, I'm going to leave, right? So I just worry and I, I say, okay, then I'm not going to baptize, you know. So I saw a lot of students, they get baptized. So I was like, oh, I, I would like to be baptized, uh, baptized like them too. I said to myself, their parents are so kind. Why my parents didn't allow me to get baptized? And I, but like my teacher taught me, just pray every day and uh, God will open the way for you. Then I always pray, you know. And uh, one day, I, I started to go to church every week. My parents told me, you can go to church every week, but don't convert, don't get baptized. We allow you to go to church, but you cannot get baptized. Well, and Jesus said, if you're not reborn again, and then you cannot go see his kingdom. So I, my real goal is to get baptized. So because my parents forced me not to baptize, so I'm getting uh, like uh, sad and not happy about that. So but I keep going to church and the church layman pastor saw me, he got attention on me that, oh, this kid's been come to church every week. And he came to me and asked me, oh, hey, would you like to get baptized? I said I would, I will, but my parents doesn't, you know, didn't allow me to get baptized. So it's a problem for me. And he told me, don't worry, just go ahead. God will take care of you, everything. Yeah, but my faith was not strong enough to, you know, to disobey my parents. But it, one day in uh, April, you know, in month April, uh, we have a water festival, you know, that uh, Buddhism uh, festival, Buddhism New Year. They have uh, like water, they, when you go, when they see you on the street, they will water you, they will throw you with the water. That the festival of Buddhism, you know, or well, how, how nice your dress or how, they don't care, they're just gonna wet you. So because that day is the wetting people day, you know. <laughs> yeah, so some people get mad, but you can do nothing. Yeah, some people are going to Buddhist temple with, to go and give the food to the monks in the way they just get wet. So they go to the, on the temple with the wet clothes, whatever, you know. So also at that time, they, have, uh, they had a for tournament about a fighting tournament. Boxing, like we see right now, boxing tournament. A lot of people came and registered, you know, to fight because we get money, we get the price if we fight, you know. And it's a lot of crowd and watching and screaming too. And um, I was loving to watch 
that kind of match too. And I watch the match and people are fighting, um, people screaming, especially women and ladies and girls. They are the most, the worst, they scream, you know. So I, I look at that and I start my thought pop out in my head. Well, if I was one of the fighter, how much screaming, how much cheering will I get, you know? <laughs> so I next after the days over, next day they announced to come and register the new you know, the new matches. So well, I would like to hear the cheering from the other people, like the people are getting. So I went and registered my name too. But not that I don't, because I was a good fighter, just because I want to hear the cheering from the crowd. <laughs> so I went and registered my name. Okay, so they put my name with one of my partner for for tomorrow match. So I went home with the excited excitement that I will get cheering from the crowd for tomorrow and I will be famous or in their girls' eyes or something like that. <laughs> so I went home and take a took a good sleep for tomorrow match. Um cannot wait to hear their cheering. But I don't, I don't even think about how hard to fight and how, how dangerous it is this. But I just only see the cheering is coming. Well, you know, next day as the time is up, we, I went to the place where we had to, we have a, had a tournament is. I went there and uh, waiting for my you know, we we be under the stage and watching other people fight and the match is a couple, few matches uh, were ahead of mine. So I was waiting and the more closer to me, the more nervous and the more shaking and the more scaring, afraid, my heart start pounding. Well, the cheering that I would like to, I wanted to hear is not in my, my mind anymore now. Now, now the only thing is I just want to run away, no more. Well, if I run away, people will mock me and I say, oh, you are, you, you know, something like you scare, you, you, after you register and you run away, you know, and the girls will mock at me. That's like the, the most concern to me. Bro. So, well, I keep myself brave, okay? I can do it. I can do it, you know, the more, and the up match, after match, and finally, they called out my name. They said, okay, Saint win. And the partner, this is your turn. Please welcome up to the stage. I was so shaking, I could barely walk. And then I would climb up the stair, and people, two people has to hold me, like not to fall down. You know, they push me up there. Don't worry, you can do it. Wow, well, it's shaking like a, you know, something like in a cold or something. So I went up to the stage and I, well, people, I think, I, I thought, I think people are screaming, but I couldn't hear it at, at all, you know. I was nervous, too much nervous. And my fighter was, look, at me very brave, and I was like, whoa, there's another problem too now. I look around and I couldn't even see anymore. My eyes get blurred, blurry, you know, I was like, Oh no, that's the wrong decision to, that I made. <laughs> so now the now the judge want us, hey guys, you ready to fight? All right, then the judge said, fight. And now my opponent attacked me very uh, fast and fast fists. 
to my face like he punched the punch that he made was so cor I mean so the get to the target like in my face <laughs> that's a good target and uh, I didn't know how to defense that I remember if I miss Savannah is a very good fighter too he told us so if he wa she was there she could taught me a little bit teach me yeah. but nobody so I I I didn't fight for to win I fought for cheering so there's nothing so I the my opponent fought so fast and I couldn't even defense or fought back nothing so the only thing I got is punches in my face it's punches after punches and I you know I just wave uh, my hand just like this and my opponent hands it just like this and to my face or to my forehead to my nose everywhere wow I thought to myself well I better surrender early so I better surrender early to protect my you know damage in my face or to hurt in my face otherwise my destiny will be in the hospital so I was like uh, okay well, I, again, I thought, well, if I surrender early, early, well, if I see other women or ladies in the road, they will say to me, what happened? You just surrender early. Oh, you very bad fighter. <laughs> well, I'm, that's my most concern. Okay, I'm brave. I will stand up and I will fight, even though I don't know how to fight. <laughs> I keep fighting, 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 but the more I fight, the more I got hurt, so... Well, this is not... I'm hopeless for me. I will never win this match unless some miracle happened to me. So, you know, I remember again, God. I said, God, you know everything. Uh, you able, you are almighty. Lord, I said I made the wrong decision today. I w but I would like you to help me to win this match. If you win, if you, if you help me to win this match, Lord, I will get baptized right away. <laughs> and I will f forget whatever my parents said. I'm just going to go straight and uh, get baptized if you let me win this match because I want my good reputation after this match. No, and uh, okay. You know, I, I was praying in my silence, in my heart, nobody see, nobody saw it. So, and then the, the mess, the judge said, okay, ready again. So this time, I'm not slow like other rounds. You know. So this time the judge said, fight. Well, this time I ahead of my opponent a little bit. I just run to him with a high speed and uh, not punch him and I just go and hug him and we fell down. <laughs> we fell down and before we both reached to the ground, my knee hit his forehead oh. and his forehead get cut and bleed. Well, now my opponent sit on the floor and uh, get dizzy and get dizzy. I said, well, if this time not finished, then I will surrender. <laughs> and uh, my opponent tried to get up and when he tried to get up, the, the judge count one, two, three. You know, if you, t if 10, then that's done, but before it got 10, it's like, I feel like the just count was too slow for me. Come on, judge, faster. <laughs> so, uh, one, two, well, too slow, so my opponent could have time to get up. So, well, that's not gonna work. Only thing work is, okay, Lord, please, just stop him, you know. Lord, I need you to help me, not, to let my opponent stand up anymore. So Lord, please, I will get better. 
<laughs> so, well, finally, my opponent couldn't get up. I won. <laughs> Without knowing the fight, I won. <laughs> With the miracle of God. And I went home straight away. I knew that God is helped me. God was with me. So I told my mom, mom Dad, I want to baptize. And my parents told me, if you get baptized, don't come back home. Well, that's fine. I just, next, you know, next hour they said, we're going to have a baptism. Okay, my, I had first name, saying when we'll get baptized. I don't know. So I put my name on it and they, Finally, I got baptized to God, you know. And I know that God will forgive my sin and will take me to heaven. Not reincarnation to animals, not reincarnation back to human life, to, to heaven. And uh, I know that Jesus can able to help us to save our sin and to take us to heaven. So after I knew that if I don't tell my friends, then Jesus will not, you know, happy about it. So after I got baptized, I came back home and my mom already knew because other people reported to her that I got baptized. So I came back home at night time, not daytime, night time, because I kind of worry in the daytime. So I come in back at night time, and I, my mom said, are you coming back now? Don't you dare to step out on the house. And I, you know, mothers, we don't afraid more than our father. So I just quietly stepped to my bed and just lie down and slept. Whereby she keep scolding or Keep whatever talking, but in the morning, my dad told my mom, "Okay, that's okay. It's already done. Don't worry. Just now, you still have one son that uh, in Buddhist believing, but just let it go. You know, just let see your two sons and with a different religion, which one is will make more impact? Which one is will more have a life? The different life between these two. Let's see. You know." My, pa my father told my mom like that. And then when we day go, days go by, I started talking to my brother about, uh, about Jesus. And she read the Bible to him and invited him to the church. And day by day, week by week. And, uh, you know, finally he fell in love with Jesus too. Amen. And finally, Jesus, and uh, finally, he got baptized to Jesus too. And again, now my brother, after my brother, uh, again, uh, my friend that come and visit us every, you know, every other day, sometimes like every week, I started talk to them about Jesus too. And uh, my friend were all Buddhist. So, but I talked to them Jesus and I show them scripture and I pray for them every day every time they came to my house so they start interesting in the bible and day by day day by day i took them to church and they fell in love with jesus Amen. and uh, finally four of my friends when you see in the picture they got baptized in jesus too. because I knew that Jesus only can set me free yes. from sin. So, friends, if you are, if you know that Jesus sets you free, please, you know, we will let our friends that don't know about Jesus yet, so we will send them to Jesus. And I would like to close with a story story about a slave that being sold at the auction an auction as you know friends slave is terrible things in this option the slave was standing right here 
in front of the crowd and the, like the optionary got up and uh, you know take their bids for the slave and people look upon to the slave and they saw this slave is they saw a very good investment in this slave why because he was big and strong and he looked very young too so many more years ahead good investment for this slave but the only problem is as people look upon as people look upon the slave the slave kept shouting at the people and he said I will not work I will not work by the way he looked very intimidating he didn't look like people you know can force him to work nonetheless people wanted him so price getting higher and higher and higher finally folks he was sold out in the high price and the owner came in to claim the slaves and uh, the slave said to new owner I flow that I flow that you've paid such a high price for me but like I said I will not work I will be no man's slave the owner said to the slave just come come with me again with the they get into the with a house i mean horse and a, in the carriage they get and they started to go down to the road and the man stop at a beautiful house on the side of the road with with a nice picket fence and the owner said to the new uh, the slave look at that house is that beautiful and the and the owner said this how where you will be stay and the owner look at the house and he knew that this is not a quarters of a slave this is the quarters that belong to one of family members so he he slave said to the owner i flatter i flatter that you do such a thing for me but like i said i will not work no matter what you gave me i will be no man's slave the owner looked at the slave and said i bought you not not to become a slave i bought you to set you free and the owner gave him the house key everything and he get into the carriage and he walked away he went his way and the slave stand up there look after the owner with all and uh, he shock and he just been free received a beautiful house on top of that the mercy uh, and this uh, uh, this slaves contemplating the kindness the mercy and the grace that bestowed upon him right away he chased that car- carriage down and the- stopped that man and he said to him sir if you bought me to set me free then i will serve you the rest of my life if you bought me to free me then i belong to you i am yours forever friends along around 2000 years ago there was another slave another master in another auction the human race were bondage to the sin not to the law but there are someone that came to purchase us and he paid the price we were bought by the blood of Jesus not with the corruptible things silver or gold but we were purchased by the gold of Jesus blood and the silver of Jesus tears this is the price that he paid for our redemption and he bought us now that we can become a slave 
what do uh, and become a slave that do whatever he wants you to do he bought us to free us free from what free from sin free from worry free from lustful thought free from doubt free from anything that binds us whatever slave we are the blood of jesus frees us because what he has done to us i want to say like this friend lord if you bought me to set me free i will serve you for the rest of my life if you bought me to set me free lord i am yours forever and jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free thank you church may god bless all of you